I'm reading from the authorized version of the scriptures. Please get your copy of the authorized version of the scriptures. Please follow me along word for word, verse by verse, at the scriptures that we will be looking at today. Please follow me along. Check me out. Follow me along. Make sure I'm not skipping a groove. Make sure I'm not lying to you. Make sure I'm not taking anything out of context. Follow me along as we read. I want to begin with one verse out of Mark, chapter 16. Just one verse to start. Let's read verses 14 and 15. Two verses, excuse me. Afterward he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat, and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. Go preach the gospel to every creature. Now, does that mean that they would go preach the gospel to horses and stuff like that? No, to every creature. But we have to remember what is said here in the Gospel of Luke. In the Gospel of Luke. <clears throat> and in the Gospel of Luke... Oh, Luke 24, Luke 24, verses, oh, 45 on to verse 48. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures, and said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer, and to rise from the dead the third day. And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And ye are witnesses of all of these things. Where he says in um, um, Mark chapter 16, verse 15, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every pre uh, creature. And then in Luke chapter 24, Verse 47, And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. As we've talked about uh, at length before, as our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, God manifest in the flesh, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, he came here first as the Lamb, offering the kingdom of heaven unto the Jewish people, the Hebrews. They rejected that. Because it was prophesied that he was going to go to the cross and die, bury, and rise again the third day according to the scriptures and shed his blood to for the remission of sins and stuff like that. Then the kingdom of God, after the death, burial, and resurrection and the ascension, which and after when he died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scripture, the death of the testator brought in this dispensation in the New Testament. Okay? Okay, that's what brought in this dispensation. This dispensation, the New Testament, okay, the New Testament, the death of the testator. Covered that in a video before as well, okay? But see, as the kingdom of heaven was first offered unto the Jew, so the kingdom of God, which is spiritual. See, the kingdom of heaven is the physical kingdom. The kingdom of God is the spiritual kingdom, okay? That was first offer, uh, offered primarily unto the Jew. While in this dispensation... Okay? But they rejected that. And then it went on to us Gentiles. We were grafted in, which is the mystery of the gospel. The mystery of the gospel. We were grafted in to make the Jew jealous. And on that, on that, we go to Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10, verses 44 on to verse 48. And this is the whole and this is about the story of Cornelius, which we have discussed before. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. And they of the circumcision, Hebrews, Jews, which believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. They were astonished, like, whoa. Wow. Even the Gentiles. The Holy Ghost and the Lord is that Spirit was poured out upon us too. Okay? Mm. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then 
answered Peter, speak on tongues, known languages. You look in the scriptures, every time that tongues, speaking in tongues is mentioned, there were always Jews present. Because the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. <laughs> okay, let's continue. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then answered Peter, can any forbid water that these should be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then prayed they him to tarry certain days. Baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. You know, you hear, you've heard, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And some dunk them three times. There is an, an on that, on that, okay, as far as baptism. Uh, where, where is that? Where is that? Oh, yeah. Uh, Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4, verses 5 on to verse 12. Acts chapter 4, verses 5 on to verse 12. And it came to pass on the morrow that their rulers and elders and scribes and Annas the high priest and Caiaphas and John and Alexander and as many as were of the kindred of the high priest were gathered together at Jerusalem. And when they had set them in the midst, they asked, By what power or by what name? Have ye done this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto them, Ye rulers of the people, and elders of Israel, If we this day be examined of the good deed done, in the done to the impotent man, by what means he is made whole, be it known unto you all, and to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Only one name, the name of Jesus Christ. Okay? The name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, the name, it doesn't say the names, the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Okay? This is a no-brainer. You've heard of the Trinity. The Trinity is a satanic, devilish doctrine that is promoted by Catholicism. Here's what I think of the Trinity. That's what I think of the Trinity. The Trinity is satanic. The Trinity is not of God. The Godhead. Okay? One name. The baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. One name. Okay? Also on that, 1 John chapter 5, verse 7. That's talking about the Trinity. Uh, no, it's talking about the Godhead. It's talking about the Godhead. 1 John chapter 5, verse 7. For there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father... The Word, the Word, capital W, one of seven appearances of the capital W Word, okay, in the authorized version, okay? The Word made flesh, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. Spirit, the Holy Ghost, soul, the Father, body, the Word made flesh. So, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, Father, the Word, the Word made flesh, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. Only one name. Baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. I know people who have been baptized in water. Baptism is an outward profession of an inner conversion. It is not necessary for your salvation. No matter what Catholics teach, and the care Catholics, Pentecatholics teach as well. Okay? It's not necessary for your salvation. Mark chapter 16 is talking about the water baptism that they were doing to identify the Jews at the beginning of this dispensation, uh, identifying them with the kingdom of, uh, kingdom of God, okay? It wasn't, even then, it wasn't necessary for salvation, okay? But see, they were baptizing at the very first, 
because it was similar unto John's baptism, you know, baptizing them uh, for the remission of sins, baptizing them, identifying them for the kingdom of heaven that was being offered unto the Jews by our Lord Jesus Christ. Same principle, but they put it off, okay? So uh, water baptism was never in this dispensation a requirement for salvation, okay? Beware of the water dog. Okay, beware of the water dog. But there is only one name under heaven by where we must be saved. Okay? And that is our Lord Jesus Christ. There's only one way. There is only one way. And we are to go as ministers of the gospel, as uh, ambassadors of Christ, having the word of reconciliation, the scriptures, and having the ministry of reconciliation, we are to go to preach to whomever the Lord will send us unto. Whoever. Whoever the Lord will send us unto. I have encountered before with a young man of Japheth. Um, Cody Resilient was his name. And he played an esoteric card on me. He said to me, esoteric, Esoteric is something that is pertinent for the in crowd, for those who are likely only to know the specific, the specific thing. Well, exoteric with an X is for the general public. So this Cody Resilient played an esoteric card on me where he said something to the lines of, well, I'm not from the streets, as he apparently was. So therefore, because I am not from the streets, I have no right to tell him anything pertaining onto the things of God. I've also encountered this recently, kind of subtly implied, because I did, the Lord had me to do a video rebuking a heretic, Mark the Mess, okay, a fine young Hamite man, okay, who is of Ham. Uh, the Lord led me to do a pretty stern rebuke to him, uh, rebuking what he taught, Okay, that young man is a heretic. He's lying. He is a Judaizer. He who teaches work salvation. He, he, he teaches witchcraft. He's a, he's a heretic. He's leading people to hell. But it has been implied that because I am not of Ham, I have no right to rebuke a heretic who is lying to you about the God whom I serve, who has called me to this position to preach the gospel unto every creature. Okay? To those of my kindred, Japheth. To the kindred of Shem. To the kindred of Ham. Okay? Whoever it is. Whoever the Lord will send me to. That's who I'm going to preach to. Whether you're black, white, red, yellow, republicant, or demokami. Okay? It doesn't matter. To whom the Lord will send me, that is who I'm going to preach to, okay? As far as being a witness of, the, of our Lord Jesus Christ and preaching the gospel, we shouldn't relegate ourselves to, well, I'm of Japheth, so I'm going to just witness unto those of Japheth? Did Peter do that? No. He, a Hebrew... Okay, and remember, the Hebrew was derived from Shem. There are those who are of Shem who are not Hebrews, such as the Japanese, the Chinese, the Koreans, and stuff like that. They are of Shem. The American Indian, okay, they are of Shem, but they are not of the Hebraic line. The Hebraic line was taken out of Shem, okay? Shem, dwelling in tents. The American Indian, okay? Okay? And, beg your pardon for this foolishness, the Lord has had given me a lot of experience in witnessing on to the Hebrew and to the Shemites. Okay? Yes, he has. But then again, also, if the Lord would send me to preach unto those of Ham, those of Ham, those of Africa, those of Egypt, the Aztecs, you know, the Aztecs who built pyramids? Okay? I would preach unto the Hamites. Okay? It doesn't matter. Why? Because we who are of the church of the living God, we are servants of Christ. We are ambassadors for Christ. 
having the ministry of reconciliation and having the word of reconciliation. And this notion, this notion that when it comes to preaching the gospel, those who are indigenous to that kindred are the only ones who have the right to preach unto that kindred. There's, there's, a, there's, there's, there's a problem with that. Okay, we, we already looked in Acts chapter 10 with Peter, who was there witnessing on to Cornelius. Okay, Cornelius, who obviously was of Japheth. Okay, Peter, who was a Hebrew, of Shem. Okay, obvious. All right, so that blows that out of the water. But what about in this dispensation? What about in this dispensation? This very dispensation. Okay, we're talking about witnessing being witnesses. I, unfortunately, have very subtly, subtly implied that because I am not of Ham, that I had no right to rebuke and refute a heretic who is leading people onto hell with his false doctrine. But because I am of Japheth, and Mark the Mess is of Ham, the implication is that I had no right because I'm not of Ham. Really? Hmm. Really? Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 16 on to verse 22. And see, when people play this card like Cody Resilient did. You're not from the streets. No, I'm not. I'm not. So wait, because I'm not from the streets, that means as one who is called to preach the gospel, I have no right to speak to you because I'm not on your level? Because I'm not of Ham, I don't have the right to refute Someone who claims to serve my God and be a witness unto him, but yet in his teaching, his doctrine, he is a heretic and leading people to hell. But yet because I'm not of that kindred, of him, I have no right to speak or to refute. <laughs> yeah. Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 16 on to verse 22. For though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of. For necessity is laid upon me. Yea, woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. For if I do this thing willingly, I have a reward. But against my will, a dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me. What is my reward then? Verily that when I preach the gospel, I may make the gospel of Christ without charge, that I abuse not my power in the gospel. That power in the gospel... You look across the page here, if it is like that in your set of scriptures, in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, okay, verse 6, Or I only a Barnabas, have we not power to forbear working? He's talking about working in the secular work field, okay? Paul was a tent maker. Paul was single and had no other mouths to feed, okay? And he did that, he chose not to, to use that God-given right to dedicate everything he had onto the ministry, which he did. But he also, for his necessity, worked for him with his own hands as to be a witness onto the people who he was witnessing to. Because there were those out there who wouldn't work at all, but yet would take money without doing, without even properly working in the scriptures teaching things they ought not for filthy lucre's sake. Okay? All right? And in the book of Acts, Acts chapter 6, the apostles themselves said, it is not meet for us to leave the word of God that we should serve tables. Okay? That's the power he's talking about. Under this dispensation, under, according to the gospel, okay? If the Lord has called you to preach the gospel, okay? You do, God-given, have uh, the right to forbear working in the secular workforce 
in order that you may dedicate your entire life to preaching the gospel. Okay? That is scriptural. I know a lot of people have a problem with that, but you're, you're fighting against God and his word. Okay? So you got to deal with that. Okay? There is some legitimacy to There is legitimacy to that. But see, someone who is not speaking the true gospel, okay, who is preaching another Jesus, he's robbing people because he's not preaching the true gospels. Well, let's continue. For though I be free from all men, yet have I made myself servant unto all, that I might gain the more. And unto the Jews, I became as a Jew, that I might gain the Jews. To them that are under the law, as under the law, that I might gain them that are under the law. To them that are without law, as being without law. Being not without law to God, but under the law to Christ. And now that's not meaning that under the law to Christ that we are keeping the Ten Commandments. Okay, that video again to mark the mess. Okay, we, we, we refute this very thing. We are not salvate for our salvation. We are not to be keeping the Ten Commandments today. Even the Jews under the Old Testament couldn't do it themselves. Okay, that video is going to be in the description box of this video. Okay, it's going to be in the description box of this video. Okay, but we have, you know, the Lord doesn't save us so we can run nilly, willy nilly according to our own dictate. It doesn't work like that. Okay? It doesn't work like that. Okay? You want to know what the laws are for us today? A good place to start the book of Romans and Romans chapter 13. Okay? So let's continue. To the weak became I as weak, that I might that I might gain the weak. I am made all things to all men, that I might by all means save some. And let's read verse 23. And this I do for the gospel's sake that I might be partaker thereof with you. Okay? So, Paul, who went to the Jew first, and also to the Greek, he was the apostle unto the Gentiles. Okay? Peter, Peter, who went to a Gentile, Cornelius, but he was the apostle unto the circumcision, the Jews, the Hebrews. Okay? So, in preaching the gospel, did Paul, because he was a Hebrew of the Hebrews, of Benjamin, did he just stick with his own kindred? No. 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 Philip. Okay, Philip. And the Ethiopian eunuch. Okay? The Ethiopian eunuch. Philip. A Hebrew. The Ethiopian eunuch. Obviously of Ham. And obviously black. Okay? Obviously. Obviously. Okay? Have you ever met an actual Ethiopian before? Yes. Hi. I have. Uh, an Ethiopian. Yes. Um, black. <laughs> black. All right? Philip brought the gospel onto a Hamite. Ethiopian. Peter. A Japhethian of Japheth. Paul. He went to Shem, Japheth, and Ham as well. So this idea that you ought to only preach unto your own kindred, that's heresy. That's heresy. Now, should there uh, are there uh, should there be those within our kindreds to preach within our kindreds absolutely but then again today you got to think about this okay Th think about this go with me this here's a little rabbit okay look at japheth the white man okay japheth those the europeans okay okay and of japheth that also includes the spanish okay just so you know all right but those of Japheth, who's, uh, who is there of Japheth today? Hmm? Well, let's think. Joel Osteen. Okay. 
prosperity gospel. His gospel is uh, the secret. Okay? Kenneth Copeland, word faith. <laughs> John MacArthur, who is worse than the first two. John MacArthur, a Calvinist. Okay? Calvinist. Who doesn't, whose perfect standard is himself, not the scriptures. Okay? Paul Washer, also a Calvinist, tiptoes along the lines. <laughs> tiptoes along the lines of, um, of preaching against once saved, always saved. Okay? Work salvation, totally work salvation. He, he tiptoes really closely to the line of um, no, uh, against once saved, always saved. Ray Comfort also teaches work salvation. What about holiness? Repent of all your sins before you are saved. And you got to keep it and you got, you know, if you sin, you, you, I mean, come on. Paul Washer, Ray Comfort, the heretics, both of them Calvinists. Yeah. Yeah. That's what Japheth has done. The men that I mentioned, all, all lost, not saved. Ham, huh? Ham. And look at the people who are of Ham. T.D. Jakes. The guy's a wicked heretic, lost on his way to hell. Creflo Dollar. Are you crazy? What about Vudi Bocham? A Calvinist! Elect and not elect! Okay? <laughs> Calvinist! Alright? Those three men, T.D. Jakes, Creflo Dollar, Vudi Bocham, they're lost! Oh, and let's add Mark the Messenger. Also of Ham, works salvation, openly teaches against the redemption of the purchased possession, and once saved, always saved, he's lost. But you need that young man as an example unto your generation of the Hamite? Like those of Japheth need John MacArthur, Paul Washer as an example unto Japheth? And what about Shem? There's Bill Schneblin. Bill Schneblin. What about him? I don't know about him if he's saved or lost. I don't really know. And to be quite honest, I don't really know of any truly saved big, big named uh, Hebraic preachers <coughs> who are of Shem, who are truly saved. I don't really know of any. A lot of people say, uh, some will, well, what about Art Katz? Art Katz. Art Katz, no. I don't believe he was a saved man. I don't believe he was a saved man. I really don't. I really don't. I really don't. See, there ought to be those within the kindred, uh, within each of these kindreds, within Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Yes, but see, the thing that a lot of these people, a lot of people seem to be missing. Let's go to Luke chapter ten. Luke chapter ten. Luke chapter ten, verses thirty-eight on to verse forty-two. Now it came to pass as they went that he entered into a certain village. And a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was cumbered about much serving and came to him and said, Lord, <laughs> dost thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? Bid her therefore that she help me. Look at, her, look at our Lord's response. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things. 
But one thing is needful. One thing is needful. And Mary hath chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. One thing is needful. Go to John chapter 17. The Lord's Prayer. The Lord's Prayer. The What Catholicism calls the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive that was a prayer unto the Jews. The disciples' prayer. Okay? That was a Jewish prayer given unto Jews. Okay? Alright? This, John chapter 17, is truly, truly the Lord's prayer. Okay? That's more of what Catholicism, how they've messed up scripture. But, John chapter 17... The Lord's Prayer. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify thy Son, that thy Son also may glorify thee. And thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. Note how our Lord is referring to himself in the third person. Notice that. Notice that. Mm -hmm. the father was the soul of the Godhead is the, is the soul of the Godhead okay and it is the word that made flesh, was made flesh okay how can God the father be in flesh and yet be in heaven uh, God is a lot bigger than we are okay alright great is the mystery of godliness so who is Jesus praying to he was praying to the Father, the soul of the Godhead. The soul. We are made in the image of God. We all have a spirit. We all have a soul, even the worst of you. And we all have a body. Okay? So let's continue. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Jesus Christ. Jehovah saves Christ, the Anointed One. Okay? I have glorified thee on the, on the earth. And now he's talking to making personal pronouns. Okay? I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Before the world was. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Okay? I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came out from thee. And they have believed that thou didst send me. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. And all, are my, all, and all mine are thine, and thine are mine. And I am glorified in them. By how? The Holy Ghost, that seal until the day of redemption. And the Lord is that spirit. Okay? There is only one God. One God. Comprised of a spirit, a soul, and a body. Okay? We've already discussed that. There are not three persons that make one God. That is satanic heresy. Okay? A person is... A spirit, soul, and body. You read First Thessalonians chapter 5. Let's go there. You want to see what a person is according to scripture? First Thessalonians chapter 5. 
First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. Here's what a person is according to Scripture. And verily the God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's what a person is. So when you got the Catholics... And these Trinitarians saying that God and three persons. You're saying there are three gods. No, we're not. They're only one. A person is a spirit, soul, and body. Okay? So how do three persons who have spirit, soul, and body. Okay? How do three persons make one God? Atheists even can figure that one out. That that's crazy. Muslims even can figure that out, that that's crazy. Okay? There's that uh, Axe Apologetic 17 channel that is good buddy buddies with Jesuit James White um, who did a mind-numbing video trying to explain how three persons make one God. And I, I felt 10 degrees stupider after enduring his, what, 15-minute video? Try see trying to explain to people that which is insane makes the <laughs> it's stupid. It's stupid, okay? Dear friend, the Trinity is satanic. From the inception of the Roman Catholic Church, from the inception of it, and you can look this up historically. The very first doctrine that they started to hammer home to everybody was the pagan three people, three persons make one God. And unfortunately, that has been so ingrained in what is called this Christianity today. And it's satanic. It is satanic. Okay? Let's continue. Verse 11. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. I come to thee, Holy Father. That's the only time Holy Father appears. Okay? And you see Catholics calling that scum Francis Holy Father. Yeah, that's blasphemy. Keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me I, I have kept, and none of them is lost. But the son of perdition, Judas, that the scripture might be fulfilled. And now come I to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldest take it, that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. See, we are in the world, dear brethren, but we are not of the world. You got to remember that. You have to remember that. That's why Paul in Romans chapter 12 tells us to uh, be holy in body and spirit, which is our reasonable service. Okay? We're not to be like the world. And trying to say that because you're of a different kindred, you have no right to preach the gospel onto an opposing kindred or something like that, that's heresy. That's heresy. That's dangerous. That, that leads to division. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Neither pray I for these alone, 
but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. That's encompassing us Gentiles too. That they may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee. That they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And the glory which thou gavest me I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. I in them, I in them, that seal until the day of redemption, the comforter, the Holy Ghost, the Lord is that spirit. Okay? You don't have the third person of a satanic trinity dwelling within you. You have that the one God dwelling within you, our Lord Jesus Christ. You have the Father dwelling within you. The Holy Ghost, the Lord is that spirit. Okay? I in them, and thou in me, that they may be perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me, and hast loved me as thou hast, uh, and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. Let me reread that verse again. I in them, and thou in me, that they may be perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. Father, I will that they also, whom thou hast given me, be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, the world hath not known thee, but I have known thee. And these have known that thou hast sent me, and I have declared unto them thy name, and will declare it, that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them, and I in them. And we have already looked. There is only one name given among men under heaven by which we must be saved. And that is the name of Jesus Christ. And remember uh, where it says in Matthew chapter 28. Go there. In Matthew chapter 28. Verses 19 on to verse 20. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Teach all nations. Doesn't say make disciples. And teach all nations. Baptizing them in the singular the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. These three are one. One God. One name. Jesus Christ. Okay? Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Okay? But also, too, now, okay, if you come to the Lord on His terms, broken, contrite, and in fear of the Lord, you call upon His name, and He save you. You are sealed until the day of redemption. Once saved, always saved. Okay? You have the Lord, God the Father, you know, the Holy Ghost. The Lord is that Spirit, one God, dwelling within you. Okay? And God within you, will send you to preach to whomever he will have you to preach. Whether it be a Jew, whether it be uh, a Japhethian, or a Hamite. Okay? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. And to say that it matters, that's heresy. That's heresy. John chapter 15 Verses 1 on to verse 7. I am the vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that and every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. 
No more can ye except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is, and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. If ye abide in me and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will and it shall be done unto you. But see, doing what uh, asking is according to his will. Because you got people out there that teach like uh, believe and receive. And they ask always for worldly gain. Oh, that I might benefit the kingdom of heaven. Uh, we're not building a kingdom of heaven today. Okay? Um, the Catholics are building that kingdom for that man of sin, the son of perdition. But we aren't kingdom builders. We're not. Okay? The ones who are building a kingdom today are Catholics preparing the way for that man of sin, the son of perdition. Okay? But see, without Christ, we can do nothing. And it is Christ who has called me to this position to preach to whoever. I don't know who's watching. Okay? I don't. But to subtly play the card that, well, you're of Japheth. You're white. You really are out of line refuting the heretical, anti-scriptural doctrines of a heretic who is a Hamite, who is black. I have no right to do so. Please. 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 See, that kind of mentality, that kind of esoteric, exoteric mentality is there to sow discord among brethren, to sow division. You know what it is? Go to Song of Solomon. What? Song of Solomon. Fox. The word fox. Um, if you look online at the burrowing foxes, foxes actually can do a lot of damage. The, uh, Song of, uh, Solomon's Song, the Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verses 14 on to verse 15. O oh, my dove, Thou art in the clefts of the rock, in the secret places of the stairs. Let me see thy countenance. Let me hear thy voice, for sweet is thy voice, and thy countenance, countenance, the body language kind of thing, is comely. Take us the foxes, the little foxes, that do what? That spoil the vine. For our vines have tender grapes. Spoil the vines. Did not our Lord say that he is the vine and we are the branches? But see, take us the foxes, the little, the little foxes that spoil the vines. For our vines have tender grapes. Hmm. Okay? A little bit more on this. Go to Ezekiel. Go to Ezekiel chapter 13. You know, in American dialect, you've heard the term, bear with me, foxy lady. Oh, that woman, oh, what a fox she was. Um, you, you realize, according to scripture, to call someone as a fox, as a fox, is an insult. Is degrading. Mark the messenger as a fox. Oh, yes. Yes, he's, he's guiding people onto hell. Okay? He is. Okay? <laughs> Joel Osteen, he's a fox. John MacArthur. Paul Washer. <laughs> okay? They're foxes. 
What do these foxes do? They spoil the vines. How did they spoil the vine? They would dig underneath. They would dig under the vines, taking away the soil. Okay, and in Jerusalem and in history of Jerusalem and stuff like that, you will hear it. Um, look this up on your own time. Look for yourself. These foxes would dig under, to try to dig under foundations, under walls, to expose walls and to make weaken the walls because they would dig down uh, and try to go under the foundation. And we saw in Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 15, the foxes spoil the vines. How do they do that? They dig deep. They try to go under the vine to spoil it. Ezekiel chapter 13, verses 4 and verse 9. O Israel, thy prophets are like the foxes in the deserts. Ye have not gone up into the gaps, neither made up the hedge for the house of Israel, for the house of Israel to stand in the battle in the day of the Lord. They have seen vanity and lying divination, saying, The Lord saith, and the Lord hath not sent them. And they have made others to hope that they would confirm the word. Hope others would confirm the word. Oh, the false, a false prophet and those who are following them come in to what? Confirm the word? Look at the comment section uh, uh, and the video of Mark the Messenger of the Satan. Mark the Messenger of Satan. There are some in, that, in the comment section that's like, yeah, that, that guy's a heretic. And others, don't judge him. <laughs> and other disturbing ones saying that we need him today. You're crazy. Absolutely crazy. Guys like that, you know, Mark the Messenger and all these heretics, they have seen vanity and lying divination, saying, The Lord saith, and the Lord hath not sent them. And they have made others to hope that they would confirm the word. Have ye not seen a vain vision? Have ye not spoken a lying divination? Whereas ye say, the Lord saith, albeit I have not spoken. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, because ye have spoken vanity and seen lies. Therefore behold, I am against you, saith the Lord God. And mine hand shall be upon the prophets that see vanity and that divine lies. They shall not be in the assembly of my people. Neither shall they be written in the writing of the house of Israel. Neither shall they enter into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord God. Very stern warning right there against these false prophets who are as foxes. And more on this, uh, go to Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9. We're going to see it applied in the way of an insult. An insult? Yeah, and guess who's the one who's doing the insulting? Luke chapter 9, verse 58. Uh, uh, let's know, verse 57 on to verse 58. And it came to pass that as they went in the way, a certain man said unto him, Lord, I will follow thee, follow thee whithersoever thou goest. And Jesus said unto him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests. But the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. Excuse me, I, I, that's in Luke chapter 13, which we're going to look at. That's the insult. Beg your pardon. Read the wrong one. But we, we meant to read, the, read, uh, read this one. Beg your pardon. We're going to look at when our Lord calls... Herod a fox. The Lord insults Herod by calling him a fox. We're going to look at that. Got, uh, got out of order here. But this is important here because, and Jesus said unto him, foxes have holes. They dig holes. You've heard of a foxhole in the military, right? So a fox will dig. Dig in, in the ground. How, how do they spoil the vines? They will dig under the vine. And, take in, and hence, digging away from the vine... Robbing the vine of its nutrients. 
Okay? We are the branches of the vine. And these foxes come along and dig away the nutrients for us, for those who would hear the truth. These foxes, like John MacArthur, Paul Washer, Ray Comfort, okay? Like Creflo Dollar, TJ, uh, T.D. Jakes, and like Mark the Messenger, okay? And whoever it is of Shem who is teaching contrary to sound doctrine for this dispensation. They're foxes. They dig. They spoil the vine. They spoil the vine. They cannot spoil Jesus Christ. No, but they sure can uh, co uh, contradict uh, the scriptures and teach another Jesus. Which they are doing. Which they are doing. Now, Luke chapter 13, okay? Luke chapter 13, verses 31 on to verse 35. The same day there came certain of the Pharisees, saying unto him, Get thee out, and depart hence, for Herod will kill thee. And he said unto them, Go ye and tell that fox. Fox. Foxes that spoil the vine. Uh, the false prophets who were likened unto the foxes of the desert. Who dig holes. Who rob the uh, vine of nutrients. Yeah. The Lord just insulted Herod by calling him a fox. Behold, I cast out devils, and I do cures today and tomorrow, and the third day I shall be perfected. Nevertheless, I must walk today and tomorrow, and the day following, for it cannot for it cannot be that a prophet parrot out of Jerusalem. And right here, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, which killest the prophets and stonest them that are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together as a hen doth gather her brood under her wings? And ye would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate, and verily I say unto you, ye shall not see me until the time come when ye shall say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. And that was fulfilled when he rode into Jerusalem on an ass. Okay? That was fulfilled. They said, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Okay? When he came into Jerusalem riding on an ass. Okay? Oh, Jerusalem. Jerusalem which killeth the prophets. Why? Because the prophets today are foxes. Spoiling the vines. Trying, digging, trying to dig and disturb and destroy the foundation. The foundation. The foundation. Go to Psalm 11. Go to Psalm 11. Psalm 11. Hopefully we can finish the psalm before three hours or so. <laughs> psalm 11. In the Lord put I my trust. How say ye to my soul? Flee as a bird to your mountain. For lo, the wicked bend their bow. They make ready their arrow upon the string. That they may privily shoot at the upright in heart. The foxes digging, spoiling the vine, trying to dig under the foundation. You, like I said, look this up on your own time. Foxes digging around foundations, they can wreak havoc on the foundations of buildings and of walls. Okay? They were notorious for doing so. Burrowing foxes. Okay? Look it up on Wikipedia. Wikipedia. Okay? Yeah. Verse 3. If the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? If the foundation be destroyed. Hmm. Luke chapter 6. Hold your place there. Luke chapter 6. Luke chapter 6. Verses 46 on to verse 49. Verses 46 on to verse 49. 
And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings, and doeth them, I will shew you to whom he is like. He is like a man which built an house, and digged deep, and laid the foundation on a rock. And that rock is Christ. And when the flood arose, the streams beat vehemently upon that house, and could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. But he that heareth and doeth not is like a man that is like a man that without a foundation built an house upon the earth, against which the stream did beat vehemently, and immediately it fell, and the ruin of that house was great. If the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? And look at verse 5. Uh, look at verse 4, excuse me. The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His, eyelid, his eyes behold, his eyelids try the children of men. Hmm. The Lord is in his holy temple. His throne is in heaven. Hmm. His eyes behold, his eyelids try the children of men. Hmm. Go now to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. See, if someone builds their foundation, someone is truly saved today. Born again, converted of the church of the living God. Your foundation is Christ Jesus. But to see these false converts who want to boot the door out of the way and shout their heretical doctrines through the crack are thieves and robbers. They climb up some other way. Okay? But see, if Christ is your foundation, if Christ is your foundation, that foundation may never be destroyed. There is no such thing as someone who was once saved, but yet he's no longer uh, saved. Because we're once saved, always saved. You hear often of people saying, well, I was a Christian, but now I'm not. Well, you might have very well be a Christian, but they're saying, I was once you know, part of this, but now I'm not. Um, they, were never part, they were never saved to begin with. Because, like Brother Alberto Rivera said, you can go from Rome to Christ. You cannot go from Christ to Rome. It's impossible. But, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 11. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk, not with meat. For hitherto ye were not able to bear it, Neither yet now are ye able. Why is that? For ye are yet carnal, fleshly. For whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? Walking after the flesh? <laughs> I'll only listen to a good godly preacher. Of Japheth. Okay. What if he's preaching heresy? I don't care how wrong he is. Don't put your hands on the man of God. Ugh. 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 Or. I, I got to hear the gospel. Only from my own people. Of him. Are you not carnal and walk as men? For while one saith, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are ye not carnal? Who then is Paul, and who is Apollos, but ministers by whom ye believe, even as the Lord gave to every man? I have planted, Apollos watered. But God gave the increase. So then neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. 
Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his labor. For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. And brethren, people, the foundation that these heretics today are laying is not Jesus, the Jesus Christ of the scriptures. They're preaching to you another Jesus. Back in Psalm 11. If the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? That's a rhetorical question. The foundation cannot be destroyed. But if you're preaching another Jesus, a false Jesus. The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyelids behold. His, his eyes behold. His eyelids try the children of men. The Lord trieth the righteous. But the wicked and him that loveth violence his soul hateth. Upon the wicked he shall rain snares, fire and brimstone, and a horrible tempest. This shall be the portion of their cup. The righteous Lord loveth righteousness. His countenance doth behold the upright. Hmm. Very interesting. Very, very, very interesting, dear friends. Very interesting. And this generation, this generation, <laughs> you know, when it talk comes to about speaking about generations, you go to Proverbs chapter 30. This generation, this generation right now, I believe is the generation that is going to be the generation that is going to be left behind going to be witnesses unto the redemption of the purchased possession. Uh, meaning that they're going to be around and suddenly people are going to be, are going to, that will, like that, disappear. I believe that generation is this generation today. This generation today. And what about this generation today? Proverbs 30. Proverbs 30. Verses 11 on to verse 14. There is a generation that curseth their father and doth not bless their mother. There is a generation that are pure in their own eyes and yet is not washed from their filthiness. There is a generation, oh, how lofty are their eyes and their eyelids are lifted up. There is a generation whose teeth are as swords and their jaw teeth as knives to devour the poor from off the earth and the needy from among men. Isn't that, is that not that, this generation today as it was back here in Scripture? More on this particular generation today. Uh, here's another good example for our instruction in righteousness. Matthew chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11. Verses 16 on to verse 17. Our Lord says, and he was talking about that generation specifically. But to instruct us in righteousness... Look at the generations today. Look at this generation today, right here, right now. But whereunto shall I liken this generation? It is like unto children sitting in the markets and calling unto their fellows and saying, We have piped unto you, and ye have not danced. We have mourned unto you, and ye have not lamented. Yeah, Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7, verses 21 unto verse 23. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. this generation who are right in their own eyes 
who devour the poor, who have jaw teeth as knives, swords. <laughs> I've encountered it. This generation, as with every generation, but this generation specifically, because we are that we are really close to the redemption of the purchased possession. When is it going to happen? I don't know. Nobody knows. Okay. But this generation, I personally believe, is that going to, is that generation that's going to be left behind, that's going to be witness unto the redemption of the purchased possession. Witness meaning that they're going to be that people suddenly are going to disappear. I believe that's this generation. And a little bit more, Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12, verses 34 on to verse 42. O oh, generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. But I say unto you, that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. And now this is for our instruction in righteousness. We're all going to give an account of ourselves to God. Yes. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Okay? Today we are justified by grace through faith. Okay? And every word, idle word, will be, be forgiven. We're not going to be condemned. Dispensational difference right there. But the teaching for our instruction in righteousness is... You got to season your conversation with salt. Season with salt. You know, season with grace. So we know how to answer every man. Okay? Let's continue. Then certain of the scribes and the Pharisees answered, saying, Master, we would see a sign from thee. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But he answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. And there shall no sign be given to it but the sign of the prophet Jonas. Got a video on that which will be in the description box. Today we walk by faith, not by sight. Okay? We walk by faith, not by sight. The Jews require a sign. And the Greeks seek after wisdom. Okay? And how many of them are preaching signs today? The sign gifts of blah, 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 talking in tongues. Hmm? The sign that you're righteous because you keep the law. Hmm. You got prove to me God exists. Uh, look at the leaf. Look at yourself in the mirror. There's proof enough. I need to see a sign. Are you Jewish? No. How many of you have run into that? Prove to me your God exists. Okay? <sighs> what? Yeah. Made in the image of God. Spirit, soul, and body. Look at a leaf. Okay? That didn't evolve over millions and billions and trillions of years in a galaxy far, far away. Okay? People don't want to hear that. Why? Because this is an evil and adulterous generation. An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given to it but the sign of the prophet Jonas. For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The men of Nineveh shall rise in judgment with this generation, and shall condemn it, because they repented at the preaching of Jonas. And behold, a greater and Jonas is here. The queen of the south shall rise up in the judgment with this generation shall rise up in the judgment with this generation and shall condemn it. For she came from the uttermost part of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And behold, a greater than Solomon is here. You know, the generations of the past 
are going to condemn the fur the future generations. That's always how it is. Oh, you kids today. Yeah, well, there's something to that. There's something to that. This generation that is raised on cell phones, raised without God. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and it's sad. I mean, it's sad because the only remedy is what? The only remedy is what? These people need to be broken. They need to be broken and come to the Lord on His terms, not their own. Because they want to make their own. Ye are gods, knowing good and evil. Yeah. Yeah, and there's only one name. Only one name given to men under heaven by which we must be saved. And the Lord is calling all men unto him. But see, you have to go to him on his terms, not your own. <laughs> but what do we do? What do we do? <laughs> what do we do? Well, we've got to remember 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Then we'll be done. This is kind of uh, impromptu. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. With that, hold your place there. Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2. Paul is saying, I, when he says, For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. What is he saying? Um, Galatians chapter 2. 20 on the verse 21. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Beware of people who are teaching you got to keep the law in order to stay saved. Let's continue in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. So, Paul is saying, I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Who is saved among you? Verse 3. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit, capital S, and of power, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom, wisdom of men, but in the power of God, the wisdom of men, like John MacArthur, Paul Washer, okay, Woody Bochum, T.D. Jakes, Preaching the wisdom of men. Yeah. The wisdom of men. Mark the messenger. Uh, once saved, always saved. Never felt right to me. Doesn't matter what you feel. What saith the scripture? Preaching the wisdom of men. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Albeit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect. Not sinlessly perfect, whose heart is right as perfect with God. Yet not the wisdom of this world, nor the princes of this world that come to naught. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit, capital S, the Lord himself, searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of man save the Spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. The Spirit of man. What is the spirit of man? Note that's a lowercase s. 
The spirit of man, that's the spirit of the world. Okay? Now we have not, now we have received not the spirit of the world. Spirit of man, nope, the spirit of the world. Okay? Man is made of the earth. Man is fallen. At your best, your vanity, okay? That we might know the things that are freely given to us of God, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Spiritual things. Spirit of uh, Christ, God the Father, who lives within you, with spiritual things, the scriptures. And here it is. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual, truly saved, judgeth all things. Yet he himself is judged of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord? that he may instruct him. But we have the mind of Christ. We have the mind of Christ. <laughs> As it says, where is that? In uh, Ephesians chapter 4, I believe that is. Uh, Ephesians chapter 4. One second. Excuse me. Philippians chapter 2. Verses 5. On to verse 11. Let this mind be in you, which also, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross." Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven, and things in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Yes. We have the mind of Christ. Why? Because Christ lives within us. And it is of the Lord who will direct your path. Okay? So beware, people. Beware. Remember, Peter and Paul preached the gospel unto others outside their own kindred. Beware of people who hint to you that because you are not on their level, or you're not of their kindred, or you're not from my demographic, or whatever. Beware when people say, well, because you're not on my level, you have no right to speak of me of the things of the gospel. Beware of people like that. And take heart, brethren. Take heart. Because we're going to encounter a lot of this as we continue onward in this dispensation before we are redeemed. So. Yeah, I, I just wanted to make this little video uh, addressing this. Um, I wanted, yeah. Uh, no, the Lord wanted me to speak about this. There are many foxes out there. <laughs> Wolves in sheep, sheep's clothing. Who are as foxes. Spoiling the vine, digging under the foundation. Be on your guard, brethren. Be on your guard. And uh, hopefully this video may be of help to you, may clarify some things, hopefully, Lord willing. And uh, that's going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching this. If you do, we love you. Thank you. We'll see you in the next video, whatever that may be.